So as we move into solutions, we're going to talk. going to start with uh, solutions are always made up of more than one substance. Okay. Now it might be an element, like oxygen gas is an element, sodium chloride is a compound. Okay. Our solutions can be either or. Now solute is a key term that I want to see what you can remember. Solvent. You can have a homogeneous solution or a heterogeneous solution. So we're going to recap that. Electrolytes and non-electrolytes. So think about these, make notes, and we'll recap them shortly. After we sort of pull back these key definitions, we're going to talk about those acids and base properties. Acidic and basic solutions are always mixtures. They're solutions by nature. See if you remember blue, blue litmus, red litmus, a little bit about acid properties, base properties. Next. Talk about those. So the first one is solute. Now, years ago, I used to get a lot of students saying, well, the solute's the minor one and the solvent is the major thing, which actually isn't the definition. The solvent is what does the breaking up. The solute, which typically is the smaller chemical, is what gets broken up. So an example, if you put sodium chloride in solution, the sodium chloride is going to be your solute. The sodium and the chloride, the ionic compound, will come apart, and our solvent would be water. In a lot of chemistry, the solvent is the chemical that does the breaking up. It's separating the solute uh, in, in, into individual pieces. If it's an ionic compound, it's going to split in its ions. If it's a molecule, the molecules are just going to come apart and stay neutral. So that's uh, solute and solvent. Next, we'll go over homo and heterogeneous. So we really want to look at the root of the next two words. As a prefix, homo means one and hetero means many. In terms of solutions, we're talking about layers. So some solutions, like salt water, when you put sodium chloride into solution, it will make a nice homogeneous layer. All of the solution is the same. You could sample the top, you could sample the bottom. There wouldn't be any difference. Most of the time, the solutions that we're going to deal with are homogeneous. But sometimes we have heterogeneous solutions. A lot of our labs may create a heterogeneous solution. Maybe we have a precipitate solid sitting on the bottom. We have a top aqueous team, a bottom solid, or maybe that solid. I'll color in the bottom. Maybe that's actually floating all through our solution. And if you take a sample, it's going to change the plan where you sample. So there might be a little bit more floating solid in some parts than there is in others. The last two deal with connectivity. If a solution is an electrolyte, we would have used our connectivity testers last year. And with the connectivity testers, the red light would come on. And we'll use connectivity testers again in 1020. Okay. Electrolytes, this isn't the definitions, but if something is an electrolyte, then it has ions in it. If something is a non electrolyte, it is not conductive. That's the definition. What we're going to infer is that there's no ions in solution. And that's going to tell us something about the nature of that solution. So, electrolytes conductive, non electrolytes. Not electrolytes. No 
know, chemists, chem teachers are famous. We write uh, chemical notation that has this deep meaning that it's easy for students to miss. So some examples of the notation you're going to see used to explain solutions. We'll start with that sodium chloride again. So if we have a sodium chloride solution, we'd go NaCl, which is the sol used. The big thing that hits you in the face is only the, typically the minor part, what got broken up. In the brackets, if it is a solution, that's where we're gonna put the solvent. Now, most of the time, not always, the solvent is water, and AQ is meant to represent water or aqueous. But not always. Okay. You might have an example where an alcohol is the solvent. You could actually take water and put it in alcohol. I'm not saying which one, I'm just going ALC. 30, uh, you'll see ALC in the solvent of these places. And sometimes in labs, the process I'll use dissolve in alcohol. Now, we put brackets all the time. Sometimes it's not the solvent. If something is pure, okay? so I'm not going to write it on the board, but this, these are non solutions on the right. You might have H2O liquid. So we don't have a solvent in brackets, now we have a state. When you see a state, don't have a solution, we're just getting some information. So the NaCl is on the left as a solution. But you could have sodium chloride, you know, in a your salt bottle. We've got bins of sodium chloride in the lab and sodium chloride solid. We can use it to make up sodium chloride aqueous. So you gotta watch what's in the brackets. And you could certainly have a gas. You could have O2 and oxygen as a gas. could be talking with oxygen in this room where you have O2. I'm moving back to the solution side of my board and our solvent, I might just describe it as air, might be a simple way. Because I don't want to write out, I'm not going to go nitrogen, oxygen, CO2, uh, argon, and all the minor pieces. Air is sort of the simplest way to explain that solution. Okay. So watch this stuff in particular, just because something is a liquid does not make it a solution. Liquids are not solutions. Liquids are something that just happens to be in that. So these are some science and terms. Next thing from science 10 that you're going to practice, go through an activity to pull back what you learned last year. We're going to do a lab exercise from your book, but it's all right here. Data was collected for four solutions. Something you probably did similar last year. The very first solution Red litmus stayed red. Solution one, blue litmus stayed blue. So neither litmus changed color and it was non-conductive. The second solution stayed red, blue turned blue, and it was highly conductive. And the connectivity is telling us something about the ions, whether it's an electrolyte, and then we need it for uh, about ions. Third solution, 
Red stayed red, blue stayed blue, and it was highly conductive. Okay, so none of the litmus changed, so that's telling us it's not an acid or a base. And then the fourth solution either stayed blue or turned blue in the litmus, and it was highly conductive. So you're now asked to figure out, you really want to talk to your neighbors, which solution is which? Now we're told the four possibilities. The solutions are either hydrobromic acid, that's an acid, sodium nitrate, which will remind you sodium nitrate is just dilatic. Lithium hydroxide is one of the solutions, and that hydroxide needs to pop out. Hydroxides were our signs and bases. And then last, you have methanol, a molecule. Okay. Methanol has no metal in non-metal combinations. So it's a molecule, so it's not going to ionize. So which is which? So as a little bit of a reminder, you're going to have to know this table at the top for Chem 20. In case you forgot, acidic solutions is the, when the blue litmus turns red. A basic solution of red litmus blue, neutral solution, none of the litmus changes. So try to remember this. Uh, I don't memorize all of this, that sort of B to be blue and base. So that's set. If something is a base, it's going to turn or stay blue, and then the converse, the red goes with oxygen. So if it stays red or turns red, that's some evidence it could be or is an acid. So we'll recap in a few minutes after you've talked about which solution you think is which. or figure out which is which, I'm going to go through the uh, names that are given and we'll figure out which number it is. So I'm going to start with the hydrobromic acid. So as soon as you get an acid, you're not going to have that little table that's sitting on the top of the board. B to B, blue and base, but it's an acid, so it's the red. So we're looking for things staying red, turning red, and then acidic solutions are conductive. So we're looking for, looks like number two, red, red, and it's highly conductive. So hydrobromic acid should be solution two. Sodium nitrate. We've got a metal and a polyatomic, so that's, that's ionic. Our solubility table tells us all nitrates are highly soluble. So nitrate does not pair up with anything that we place in solution. It's a really nice thing to sort of memorize. All nitrates are soluble. So it's going to be highly conductive, but it's not an acid or a base. So you find something highly conductive that the litmus doesn't change. Four has a change, so that doesn't work. Two we used already, three, red stayed red, blue stayed blue, it is highly conductive. Draw the match. Hopefully you're two out of two so far. Lithium hydroxide, so hydroxides in science 10 were our basis. So we need to see blue. B to B, so we need to think, see things changing color, stay, changing to blue, staying blue, and being highly conductive. So that is number four, is our blue, blue, and conductive. Which only leaves one left, methanol, which is a molecule. It's not an acid or base. It's not something acid. It's not something hydroxide. And nothing is going to ionize. The methanol, all that there's a billion methanols, they can come apart from each other, but they don't, the actual methanol doesn't become a positive and a negative. The molecules just spread out. So that's going to be number one. Nothing changes color and there's no connectivity. 
So we're going to fail about the high and put a linear down the multiple lines here in this form. So to end right now, a little bit of practice. You can work through all the problems, but we're just going to recap uh, number one and two in a few minutes. You need some background knowledge. Some of these I wouldn't put on a test because you may not be sure, but uh, many of these would work. So look at number one. One would be a heterogeneous solution versus a homogeneous solution. And then number two, which ones are actually solutions? We're getting away from just because something's a liquid does not make it a solution at all. It has to have a solute and have a solvent. So let's recap number two or go through them. I'll just put check or access whether something is a solution or not. So does milk have uh, multiple things in it? Yeah, there's lots of sugars, there's water. Milk is definitely a solution. Okay, we're not talking about whether it's homogeneous or heterogeneous. Pop, yeah, there's water, there's sugar, there's carbon dioxide. Pop is definitely a solution. Pure water. That's our kind of main no on the list. It's a liquid, but it's not a solution. All the rest of them are. Even rainwater isn't going to be pure. There's going to be carbon dioxide dissolved in rainwater. 